Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. The singer Melanie Fiona revealed that labels initially didn't want to sign her because they felt like her voice was too strong. They wanted her to have an average or basic voice like Ashanti, ooh wee. Now, let me just say, I don't think Ashanti has a basic voice at all. I think she could sing very well and her voice has definitely gotten stronger over the years. So Ashanti can definitely sing. However, Melanie can blow too, and she's actually very underrated. If you haven't heard of Melanie Fiona, I'll just give you a brief background on her. She's from Toronto. She's a Guyanese Canadian R&B singer, and she first got into the industry as a teenager. She was a part of this girl group called Exquisite. Soon after that, the group disbanded, and Melanie was in the Toronto music circuit, and she was actually making music with Drake. Her and Drake were a part of this collaborative music group called The Renaissance. And this was before both her and Drake actually blew up, but eventually they did go their separate ways and pursue their own solo careers. Now it took a while for Melanie to get signed because labels simply did not believe in her. They didn't believe in the idea of her being a soul singer. They wanted her to go into a different direction. They wanted her to make pop music and some label executives just wanted to sleep with her. Right. And so I'll never forget walking into one label and playing It Kills Me for them and singing and then being like, damn, like you could sing. I didn't know Canadians could sing like that. And I was mm -hmm. like, what does this even mean? Right. And then it was like, but you know, I think you sing too well. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was coming up in a time where R&B was a more of a pop approach, like the, uh, Shanti was big, like Destiny's Child was big, and these like very main big stream acts and like this like rooted R&B mm -hmm. wasn't like this mainstream thing. And so I I left, you know, you have this dream coming from Toronto, you have all these goals of breaking into the American music industry and then you get there and then you get all this like reality. You get all these moments where you walk into an office full of male executives and they're all literally like being like, which one of us is gonna fuck her? Like, yeah. and this is a thing, you know? And so the reality bites you get in. And so I didn't want to walk into a space where I felt like that. I wanted to walk into a space where I felt like I could be all the things that I was. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, I met Steve Rifkin. The only person who believed in Melanie and allowed her to be her authentic self was Steve Rifkin. And he signed her to his label SRC Records, which was under Universal Music Group. After she got signed, Melanie started getting a lot of buzz. She released her first single, Give It To Me Right, and she got the attention of Kanye. She toured with Kanye West. She also got the attention of Jay-Z, and she got signed to Jay-Z's management company, Rock Nation. But Melanie really began to blow up when she released her song, It Kills Me. It Kills Me was top 10 on R&B radio. It was number one on the adult R&B charts. It also made it to top 50 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And the song put her on a lot of people's radar. And it was one of the leading singles off of her highly acclaimed debut album, The Bridge. The Bridge got nominated for four Grammys and It Kills Me got nominated for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. Melanie released her follow-up album in 2012 called The MF Life and her big single from that album was 4AM and 4AM made it to the top 10 on the Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop charts. Not only that, she had a hit song with CeeLo Green called Fool For You and she did win a Grammy for this song for Best Traditional R&B Performance. Melanie Fiona was at a high in this point in her career, but soon everything made a turn for the worse. Melanie was going through a lot of personal issues. She actually dealt with a very, very messy breakup from the actor Adam Rodriguez, and Adam did inspire a lot of her heartbreak songs. Then things started to take a shift in Melanie's career. In 2012, her label SRC Records became defunct and her label head Steve Rifkin parted ways with Universal. When that happened, there was a huge shift in Melanie's career because now her label's gone, she's dealing with heartbreak, and on top of that, she started to lose her voice. Yes, there was a point in her career where she could not sing more than 30 minutes because her voice kept going out on her. So there were a lot of different factors that directly affected Melanie's career. You do get a lot of no's and you get frustrated and at times my soul has felt compromised and my energy has been depleted and I literally am just like, this 
this is just not the way I envisioned me feeling about my career at this point with my love of music and how I know I want it to be and it's not the way that I want it to be and like there's been times when I've just like said it like maybe it's over. I was experiencing difficulties with my singing and that was something I had never experienced. I was singing for maybe 30 minutes and then going hoarse. And I was just thinking there was something wrong with my voice. I kept going to see doctors and specialists and they all kept telling me your vocal cords in perfect condition. We don't, we don't really know what it, what it is. And it was one doctor that said to me, what's your year been like? And I said, wow, it's an interesting question because my year has been filled with a lot of highs and lows. And when this specialist told this to me, it really opened my eyes to say, hey, like, what is going on? Maybe, maybe I am holding, and he says, maybe you are holding this heartbreak that you're carrying. Maybe you are holding this pain or this disappointment that you're feeling in your throat. And I went for Reiki, which is, an, is a form of mm -hmm. Eastern medicine and energy healing. And I was able to have relief after three mm. sessions of acupuncture wow. and I cried and I had a physical reaction on this table. I went on tour, I had an amazing time. I toured for six weeks with no vocal issues at all. And that was really the moment where I knew that I, st that I was like, okay, positive, positive, keep everything positive, keep this momentum going, keep this momentum going. After Melanie's vocal cords got healed, she became a huge advocate for health and wellness and she continued to sing. She went independent after her label ended and she also cut ties with Rock Nation in 2014. Today, Melanie has her own business, Melly Belly Mamas, and she sells crystals. And she's also a co-host on the Mama Den podcast. She's also a mother and a wife to the songwriter and manager and co-founder of the heavy group, Jared Cotter. So that's kind of a brief overview on Melanie Fiona's career. Now I wanna get into her latest interview. She recently sat down with Amanda Sills on her podcast, Small Doses. And she once again talked about how difficult her start was in the industry and how people weren't interested in her being a singer. They weren't interested in real singers. And she brought up Ashanti as an example. I remember coming in and I remember wanting to sing records. I wanted to sing R&B records. I grew up listening to the Whitney Houston's of the world, the Lauryn Hills, the Brandies, wanting to sing R&B ballads. You know what I mean? Like that's how I grew up. And then coming down here and then people saying, oh, well like you're cute and you, the, and you, you sure you don't want to do like this type of music and like what, you know, like pop it up, like pop it up and, and poke it out and, <laughs> and set it up and dumb it down. I remember going into record labels and people saying, nobody wants to hear anyone sing that well. What? Uh-huh, yeah. I was told I Wait, sang. nobody yeah. wants to hear anyone sing that, that well? well? Right, right now in, the, in that time of music. But who was out at that time of music? I mean, like, and it's no shade to anyone else. Like, I mean, Ashanti was the huge pop, like, R&B artist of that time. And mm -hmm. like, the music was more hip hop driven. It was more pop driven. And, you know, I was in here trying to be like, can I sing like Whitney Houston off the top of a mountain right now? Like, yeah, Shanti was, and can Shanti you, ain't singing. He can was you Whitney. give me a bridge? Um, it was, you know, it, it was a thing. And so I remember going into meetings and people being like, you're beautiful, you're young. Like nobody wants to hear you sing that well or speak that well. I remember back with, with It Kills Me, I took that song to so many record labels and so many record labels were like, wow, this, I mean, you can sing, but we're gonna pass. And it was like, ooh, but I don't get it. Like, if it's so good, right. why don't you jump at this? Like, if you don't see- Did they ever say why they were passing? Besides the, they just sing too well? They just didn't think that uh, a ballad would do well at radio. I think as a new artist, it was a too much of a risk. Now this right here was a very interesting discussion. When Melanie was trying to get signed, she was actually shopping her music around to different record labels. And she said she was doing this around 2007, 2008. And I thought it was interesting that she mentioned Ashanti because around this time, Ashanti was actually past her peak success. She did have a hit called The Way I Love You, but for the most part, she was past her peak. So I thought it was interesting that she brought up Ashanti. And of course, it could be looked at in a negative way. It could seem like she was insinuating that Ashanti can't sing. I don't think that's what she was trying to say. I think she was trying to say the labels wanted a particular sound. Ashanti could definitely sing, but she has a lighter voice, whereas 
Melanie Fiona's voice is fuller, it's stronger. And that wasn't really common to hear around that time. Even singers like Beyonce, who has an amazing, powerful voice, kind of had to put herself in a box that was more marketable and pop friendly. And you had a lot of singers who had lighter voices like Sierra, Rihanna, Cassie, and Carrie Hilson, who were being heavily pushed and they were making more pop based R&B music. And Melanie was making completely different music. The sound was more retro, more soulful. I would kind of compare her to a Jasmine Sullivan or maybe an Alicia Keys, but even Alicia had a more contemporary sound. But Melanie was definitely coming in doing something different and she was making music, soulful music, like Amy Winehouse. But see, Amy Winehouse got more support because a white person who makes black music is always going to get more support from the industry to be honest melanie fiona being a black woman herself could not get the same support because the industry felt like a black female artist couldn't sell around that time unless they were making pop music they had to make music that was more palatable to mainstream audiences so they had to dumb down their sound a little bit and dumb down their voice this is one of the reasons why Jennifer Hudson probably couldn't break through on the music market. Even though she had a lot of success from Dreamgirls, people weren't connecting with her music and some people felt like her voice was too powerful and strong. So if you ever wonder what happened to all of the powerhouse singers in R&B music, the industry played a big role in suppressing a lot of those voices. And Melanie was one of those artists who could have been suppressed, but Luckily for her, she was able to break through. She found somebody in the industry who actually believed in her and people supported her. People loved her voice and loved her music. Now, another interesting story Melanie shared on Amanda's podcast was about the time she went on tour with another R&B artist and she was told that the music she was singing on tour wasn't acceptable. I too remember doing a tour and I was on tour and with another R&B artist who was definitely established more in the R&B space. Mm -hmm. And I came out and I remember doing my songs off my first album and I would do rock steady as I would do two covers in the show. One was rock steady mm -hmm. by Aretha Franklin. And mm -hmm. the other was ironic by Alanis Morissette. Okay. And, it, Don't you think? and the audience loved this. My management came to me at the time and told me that there was feedback. <gasps> There was feedback from someone uh, who was saying that uh, they weren't necessarily, didn't feel that the show was aligned. And I was like, wait a second. Like, everyone's having a good time. I'm killing it on stage. I'm singing my ass off. Who in the world, in the what, like what? These are some of the things that I have faced. And I remember, I'm like, I'm not changing it. I'm going to sing this thing and I'm going to do it. It's always somebody. It's always somebody talking and smiling in your face though, that's the thing. But now I kind of put the one and two together and researched the time period that she was touring and who she was touring with. And I kind of feel like she was talking about the singer Marsha Ambrosa from the group Floetry. Before she released her second album, she did do a tour with Marsha and there is footage of her performing Ironic from Alanis Morissette. So I kind of feel like she was talking about this tour and it's possible she could have been hinting that Marsha Ambrose's team was hating on her, allegedly. I don't know, I'm just assuming y'all, I'm just assuming. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But anyway, I brought this story up because this was just another example of how the industry wanted to put Melanie in a box. And I appreciate the fact that she fought against that. She didn't allow herself to be boxed in and she didn't allow her artistry to be compromised. She did what she wanted to do and did it on her own terms. And kudos to her for doing that. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.